So you'll see lots of videos of me fishing uh, out on the bank, testing tackle, catching fish, and that's all well and good, but the rainy season's coming, and that just reminds me that one of the most important things when you're fishing is to be comfortable. And comfort can't be achieved if you're wet and you're cold. So, at New Fish, we choose the Halconunt clothing. It's all bespoke made for us. Everything's made to measure for myself, everybody in the team, and all our anglers. And that's all done here in Doncaster at Halconunt. And we're joining today Oliver Scott on. He's the managing director of Alcanont and he's going to walk us through the process and show us what goes into making suits that are renowned for their abilities to keep anglers dry and warm. So Oliver, here we are at the factory. Pleased so to meet are. you. So we are. Um, we have a quick rundown on like, the design process all the way through to a finished product um, and the care and attention that we go into to make sure that everybody on the bank's dry. Fantastic. Show us round. So well done. So Alcanon has been established for over 41 years and there are 14 members of the team here with over 350 years of experience. Back in the day, Sandra Alcanon, a keen angler and obviously a fantastic seamstress and designer, decided to put her knowledge together with her passion and create the clothing brand that's Alcanon. Oliver, we're now 41 years on and the factory is as busy as hell in the background, machines are buzzing. You're obviously, how long have you been here now? Uh, I've been here for six years now, actually. Six years in November. Wow, brilliant. So you're learning the ropes and you're working in the management side of things, overseeing all the production and uh, keeping the, the level of garments up to the high quality. Uh, you're an angler yourself. Yes. How, do you, how do you find working so, in the industry? Obviously, my one of my main job roles is to wear the garments. It sounds really daft, but because I wear the garments all the time, I can also help improve the garments. Brilliant. So over the last six years we've done slight changes to the embrace so obviously make them last a bit longer be a little bit more comfortable mm. because fishing's changing all the time the way people sit how they're fishing so we've gone from fishing in between his legs yeah fishing with poles across his knees gone from using a landed net to up twice a match to using it 300 times and a the match. wear and tear and the rigors of modern day match fishing means that you've adjusted the garments to suit the wear and, and the wear spots because it wears in different places exactly. and how people fish that's fantastic so take us round and show us the different processes that go into making one of these fantastic pieces of kit we'll start from the bottom and work to the top brilliant so the first part of the process Oliver is people come to you whether that be one person for an individual bespoke suit or whether it's a company like us at New Fish who obviously are ordering multiple suits and various other brands do the same thing with you yep. so the first process is for that person to come and you have you put together a design and that's done with, uh, you've got Chief Designer here, that's Kayleigh, and she's got the software and everything, and you can tailor make any suit with any colours, design, and any combination of that. So people actually come here and get what their heart desires. Yeah, so obviously within the GAR standards, on our standards, um, we'll make our, a colour scheme and logo placements and things for said person or said company. So obviously the new fish style, what's black and yellow, we can utilise them colours and give a class finish, but yeah, it's got to start with Kayleigh or myself, but mainly Kayleigh because she's the best at it, um, and then we work from there. Brilliant. So you've just touched on that there, that obviously Halconunt uh, Gore-Tex clothing is within the Gore umbrella, and you're working within their parameters to the highest qualities, the standards that they set. And uh, I know that you spoke to me before about the fact that every single design has to be approved and um, passed by their really specific checks to make sure that if you're going to support their label and say this is a Halconon Cortex suit, it has been checked not just by you, but by the manufacturer of the actual cloth, the breathable waterproof cloth as well. Yeah, so basically we send it off to their um, testing facility, what's overseas, they get washed 200 times and then they get placed into the rain chamber to give you whatever standard it is. 200 times? Yes. Which is far more than most anglers would ever wash it, because care is another thing, but we'll talk about that later yeah, on. Fantastic. Right. So, what happens next? Technology is a massive part of manufacturing a garment here at Alcanont. And that basically starts and finishes with 
the base cloth, which is the main ingredient for every single suit, it's a special kind of cloth, and you told me about three-layer technology. What's that, Oliver? Yeah, um, we've got a WL Gore license, um, which allows us to have to order fishing-style fabrics. Um, so there's there's lots of different fabrics what Gore do, but I was specifically designed for fishing. So we have two different thicknesses of fabrics what we use to create our ball jacket or a bib and brace. Um, obviously, the thicker fabric goes onto your like your the more the more used areas, so your knees, your reinforcement. Bulb. Yes, yeah, reinforced Brilliant. areas to make sure that your garment lasts longer. And I noticed you had actually got two different sort of uh, weights of cloth, one for the main body and then one for the reinforced areas. Yes, really. And that cloth, three layer cloth. Tell me what what constitutes that. So you've got the uh, the first fabric, so the top fabric. Um, obviously, that's the different colours fabrics as well. Um, that's the top of the fabric. Underneath is the membrane where the waterproofness comes from and then at the very bottom is obviously your base fabric what's obviously on your skin and things what needs to be nice, soft, what's not going to make you feel irritable. And that is um, hydrostatic head which we'll talk about in, in a little while onto the, yes. next, onto the next section. So that gives its waterproofness but I'm right in saying that it all the membrane that you spoke about allows your perspiration to pass out so it's breathable. So it's extremely breathable so you're not going to sweat while you're wearing them. Which I think is really important. You've got to get yourself to your peg, and when you're fishing, you can be quite active, but you're dry, dry on the outside and yeah. dry on the inside as well. Very exactly. important. Massively important. Brilliant. So then that cloth, as a raw material, goes over to the cutting table where we're going to see the pattern that we've watched being printed, yeah. and we'll see how that's cut out. Yep, yeah. so we want it to be dry and comfortable. Cloth is just cloth, Oliver, until it's then cut into the actual segments uh, via patterns and then built into a suit. So from the roll, we've seen the pattern, it's overlaid, and I believe um, it's brought here and cut by the experienced staff. I mean, a lot of these staff have been here a long time. I know Trudy's been here over 35 years. Mm -hmm. She's experienced and the massive responsibility to cut each piece of cloth to the correct size to suit each garment. And that's a specialised um, process which takes skill. And obviously it's not without its dangers. I saw. Um, so do they're using a, a metal glove uh, because these are really sharp implements and there's more than one layer they've been cut what uh, what's happening there yeah so we cut multiple sizes at once um, split them and we might have to alter them to suit so if uh, somebody is a large but they want a little bit out of the waist we'll cut them as, as a large and then we'll obviously remove them and you tailor make them yeah. and that's another massive aspect of Alcanon that it is made to measure. And people can come here and if they've got a little bit of a longer leg, but they've got a big body, you know, a big top half, they can have it done. And so this is the roughing out of cutting and then the tweaking goes on from there. When I heard you say that the word shelling early, I was thinking about casters. Where does shelling come into this process? Yeah, so after it's been cut, um, the garments have got to be sewn together. That's what we class as shelling. Um, Carol, for example, here is shelling, currently shelling the garment. So what she's doing, she is putting the patterns together, sewing them to create a jacket or create a bib and brace. That is the next process to it. So she'll be putting the trims on, putting the pockets in, everything else. So the bigger garment, the shell of the garment, that's before it gets the cuffs, before it gets the collars, before it gets the zips and that sort of thing. Yeah. So roughing out the bigger garment, that's so shelling. It's Fantastic. It's shelling. So each uh, segment of a garment, so for instance, the sleeves or the collars or the front panels, before they actually start getting put together, any embroidery or any printing has to be done. So this is a completely separate section of the factory mm -hmm. and I can hear machines that on the way in the background. What's going on for you? Yeah, um, it all depends on what said person wants. So the new fish design, for example, has got logos on it. Um, logos in place where people can see so the panels get cut and then on said panel if it needs to be an embroidery on it it gets sent through to the embroidery area where the, the embroidery happens so it will get um, embroidered and then sealed then this gets sent back to the cutting table to then get put into whatever corresponding pile it should go with 
but they need to be shelved. Brilliant. So there's a lot of work that's off in logo design. Obviously, it starts with Kayleigh at the front, but then it's passed through to Janet's department. And I know behind me, we've got a massive library. So if you have a repeat customer, like yep. a brand, like ours, who say, oh, periodically we want some more products, then you have to drag out the library, get out the master copies, which has all got the mapping, where all the embroidery lives, and then Jeanette can pull it back out, pull that file out, input it back into the machines, uh, which saves a lot of time. But you obviously have people who come for bespoke one-offs, and I'm right in saying you still store that in case somebody wants to come back for more. Yes, like um, we have to set embroidery files up, or set, set in house, um, so there's actually a one-off charge for that. But we keep that stored for just in case the customer wants it. Yeah, or something else. Might want a spare set of trousers or an extra what? jacket or something for his brother or his oh, mate yeah, yeah. or. Or he might want to put his um, work work logo onto his clothing or he wants to work wear. Fantastic. Polo. So we've still got we've got that logo permanently to use it again with what colours is needed on it because there's obviously loads of different colours. Um, we tried to keep make sure things are exactly the same from when they first started because originally we didn't make team clothing. Of course. So this is a room that takes standard Gore-Tex cloth and it personalises it and turns it into that customer's suit. It's well packed. Fantastic. So we've talked about the shelling and all of a sudden the garment's taking shape and it looks like a bin brief. I, even I can see that and I don't come here very often. But it's inside out. Why is it inside out? What's going off here? It's inside out because it's going through a seam sealer machine, um, what we call a welding machine. It's um, WL Gore approved and it's a machine that's been recommended to us that we have to use to get to the correct standard. Fantastic. So that's um, a tape which I can see being fed off the top of the machine. It's heated, is that right? Yes. So it's a three layer, it's a gore three layer tape, what gets heated so it's stuck onto the garment. Um, but we have to do it in a correct way to make sure that that garment is 100% waterproof. That's fantastic. And of course, that's uh, pressure applied, heated up, right at the top of all, over those seams. And this is a very experienced member of staff who um, has got a certain process and certain way of doing that to make sure that each layer, because you sort of get areas, let's say, under the arm where three or four joints meet. And then if you get sort of, I know you were explaining to me earlier when we were watching this process, that if you get an area where it's uh, built up, because you've got more than one seam coming together and there's overlapping of tape, it then gets a second heat treat uh, heat treater process, yeah, which so is a hot press, you call it? A hot stamper. Hot um, stamper. Any area walks, obviously, over guns, there's loads of seams going into each other. We just give it an extra extra stamp down just to make sure that that area is waterproof. It's not something what necessarily we have to do, but we choose to do it to make sure the garments are the best. And I saw can be. Tina pick up a, like a specialised tool and she just ran that up and down round the seams just to make sure that every single inch of that seam is fully welded and waterproof. Certainly does. And um, that is what sets this clothing apart, in my opinion. It's amazing. It's the care and attention to detail that we have with things. And once things are started to be welded, we then go through to the process that is the approved, and that's what gives you the real stamp of approval from Gore and makes Alcanon Gore-Tex clothing um, it's, it's certified. And that's the hydrostatic head testing. And the proof in the pudding of the quality of uh, the Halconon clothing is the sort of final test and what you have is a very specific high level machine and you'll see Tina now preparing this particular garment that she's just finished welding for its testing and it goes through one of five tests in different parts of the garment and this is a hydrostatic head machine so basically this is recreating uh, rain, weather, all the conditions but it's extreme. I mean, you're sat fishing rain. You've only got the gravity of rain falling on you, but what this machine actually does is it builds up the pressure of the water to a level that deems it to be 100% um, waterproof. Not just the cloth, the high quality cloth, but the actual machining, all the seams that have been sewn together and then all the tapes, which you saw earlier that Tina was uh, heat taping every single seam. 
and no garment leaves this building unless it's gone through this very rigorous test. So after welding, any um, non-welder products, you attach the hoods, uh, you put everything together, you put the straps on, and then the garment is coming together. And I'm right in saying it comes back into this room to see Yvonne, who is QC, quality control, and she just checks every seam. So there's two people actually looking at those seams and making sure that they are 100% waterproof. Then, are we, is that finished then, Oliver? What happens then? Yeah, so it obviously comes back round, goes around the factory. Um, after it's welded, it gets checked then. Then it gets sent back into the factory to be finished off. So the hood, um, cuffs, things like that. Back into the welding room again, but then my items to be welded. Fantastic. And then back out to be bagged and packed and sent off to the customer. Brilliant. Um, and, I, and I saw Yvonne attaching what I can only describe as the Royal Seal, seal of Approval. This is the cart mark. This is what just guarantees it's not only got the Halcon uh, logo on there and you put in your name, but the Gore-Tex and the Gore-Tex information that tells everybody what this product actually is. Yes, so in all of our um, items, there is this um, hang tag, and in the hang tag, it tells you what level of, um, what level of Gore approval it is. So we've got the highest rating, which is the um, states in here extreme wet weather construction um we're allowed to put this into here because it's passed that test fantastic so if you're looking for a suit that's actually going to keep you warm and dry i can only say that this must be the only place that you need to stop so whether it's one suit you're looking for or whether you're looking at branded clothing like we have for our new fish suits like so which are a beautiful piece of kit and this is on its way to uh, one of our retailers and well I can only say thank you very much, Oliver, for showing us around this fantastic facility, and it's no surprise to me why it's been so successful. Well done. Well done.